Hi, this is Roshan Rao, Advisory Solution Architect with ServiceNow. In this video, I will walk you through the technical components of the multi-party e-signature solution that we had built with the form DD2875. There are three major components of the solution. The first piece is the integration between ServiceNow and DocuSign and setting up the DocuSign template for the multi-party e-signature flow. The second piece is a service catalog item. And the third is a flow built-in flow designer that actually invokes the, uh, the integration and uh, does the orchestration of different activities. So let's look at our setup in DocuSign. Most of the configuration instructions that are needed to set this up are very well documented in the product documentation for the DocuSign spoke. One thing that begs some clarification is how a custom config configuration is set up. To set this up, go to Admin, Integrations, and Connect, and go ahead and add a custom configuration from here. I've already added a configuration for my demo environment. The key piece here is making sure envelope events are being sent back to ServiceNow. Once the configuration is done, there's actually a flow available as a part of the DocuSign spoke, uh, which can be used to test the integration out. If you go to flows in Flow Designer and look for flows under the DocuSign spoke application, you will find this flow available. It says send a document for digital signature which is also attached to a catalog item. Once the configuration is done to test this out, you can activate the flow and the catalog item and test it out. More information about this particular flow is available in the documentation. Coming back to DocuSign under templates, essentially upload the form that you're trying to create a signature flow with. So I added a template here and uploaded the fillable government form here, the DD2875. When you upload the form, when you upload the form, it allows you to set up the different roles for each of the recipients. And it also auto recognizes the fields that are available in the PDF. You can then go in and attribute each of the fields to different recipient roles. So if I click on one of the fields here, the user ID, on the right, DocuSign shows the recipient role that it is attributed to. You can also change other attributes in terms of what fields are mandatory, provide some parameters on validation and things like those. Once this template is set up, we now shift our focus to the service catalog item and the actual flow in ServiceNow. In ServiceNow, I have a service catalog item called System Authorization Access Request set up here. The service catalog item allows service portal users to submit access requests for themselves or on behalf of others. Given that a significant amount of information will be entered on the PDF form, the catalog item needs to submit minimal information at submission. When a request is submitted, a requested item record is created with variables containing data provided at submission. For this solution, I only required the request type and requested four fields to be filled in at the start of the request. Several other fields were added as variables in variable sets and hidden as needed. So here you can see I have five variable sets that are set up, each corresponding to a section of the form and there's a catalog UI policy which hides most of the fields in the service catalog. The purpose of the variables is to allow transfer of data between ServiceNow and the document envelope in DocuSign. It allows for pre-fill of data in the document prior to the signing process and allows for automation to be built using data coming back from the signing process. Our catalog item is tied to our custom flow here. If I open the flow in Flow Designer, we can look at the high-level steps performed within our flow. The flow is triggered at the submission of our service catalog item. The first thing it does is create a catalog task for having recipients assigned in the signing process, and then it waits for the task to be completed. 
once recipients have been assigned, they end up in, in catalog variables in our service catalog item. The next step pulls variables from the requested items into the flow for further use. We then proceed to create a draft envelope from our template that has been set up in DocuSign. One thing to point out here is before we actually execute this step, there's a DocuSign schedule job set up in ServiceNow that should be run to pull all the envelopes from DocuSign into ServiceNow. The schedule job for synchronizing with DocuSign is set up under the DocuSign application in ServiceNow. Now switching back to our flow, once the draft envelope has been successfully created, we go through and add recipients that were assigned to this flow onto the envelope. The first piece is adding the requester uh, who is the primary signatory on the document. Once the requester has been added, we take catalog variables attached to the requested item and transfer values to the document envelope. If you recollect, the user ID for the requester is being copied from ServiceNow to the document as a prefill. We then proceed to add the supervisor, security manager, IT admin, and final reviewer. There could be multiple variable value transfers happening here for each of the different document sections. I did not model every possibility here. That would be based on your requirements. Once the envelope is sent, we essentially wait for the envelope status to be completed. The envelope in DocuSign is marked as complete once all signatories have completed their sections and completed the signing process. An envelope could also be voided by an administrator or one of the signatories could decline signing or completing their section and the status would come through as decline. If the envelope is signed, we proceed to get the documents that are attached to the envelope and we attach it to the requested item. We then pull data from the envelope back into our catalog variables. Note that this is a custom subflow that was created that essentially acts as a helper. It uses a custom field map table that currently just does simple value transfers between a catalog variable and, uh, and a field in a document. Let me quickly show you what that field mapping table looks like. As you can see, this is very simple table. It stores a reference to a catalog variable. The type of mapping, meaning outbound from ServiceNow to DocuSign or inbound from DocuSign to ServiceNow or bidirectional data transfer. And this is the, the external variable or the field name in the envelope. Switching back to our flow, if data transfer and, and attaching of the document to the requested item is completed successfully, we update the status of the requested item and close the request. If there's a failure, we add information about the failure as a note to the requested item and then go ahead and close it, i.e. mark it as close complete. The only customization that was made to support the solution in addition to the mapping table is the addition of a reference field to the task table that stores a reference to the DocuSign envelope once it is created. Out of the box, this reference field is actually on the HR task table, which doesn't help if the task that is being created is not a part of the HR workflow. Everything else to support this solution is really contained in configurations to out-of-the-box con components. On the topic of HR, some partners have asked how this solution may be tied to HR onboarding. ServiceNow's HR Lifecycle Events application allows you to add HR tasks with the onboarding process that are tied to items from the service catalog. An example of this is the setup Active Directory account activity in the pre-boarding activity set which is a part of the HR demo data. I added a similar activity to complete the DD2875 
to the pre-boarding activity set, which is attached to the catalog item that we just added. That completes the technical walkthrough of this solution. Enjoy.